Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. Gold and silver have been hit hard as we are on the verge of another panic. Let's explore. <laughs> Yes, indeed, we have seen the markets move fairly dramatically today. Some of it was predictable, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, but nonetheless, here we are. The markets are all in the red in terms of uh, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, or rhodium. But more importantly, the panic is in the uh, stock market. Uh, we are looking at numbers right now, a very dramatic move down as the markets have just closed here uh, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average down uh, 1,276 points. And that's almost a 4% drop. The NASDAQ is down over 630 points. That's over a 5% drop. And the S&P 500 is down uh, over 177 points. And that's uh, over a 4.3% drop. And the New York Stock Exchange, all these other except for the Nikkei, it's the only one that's kind of up right now, but uh, they're down. But what is in the green? Well, that's just it. People run to the safety of cash, and that's exactly what happens. The dollar is up um, 1.66 points, up over 1.5% per uh, percent, up to 109.88. But now gold and silver have been hit very diff hard here today, although not as big of a drop as we have seen um, with the as the gain we saw yesterday for silver, although it is still performing worse than gold, which we can't expect to see. But gold has dropped 1.3% down $22.40 to $1,703. Silver has dropped 45 cents. That's a, over a two 0.2% drop to $19.42. Now, that's enough with the numbers. Let's find out exactly what's going on here. Uh, what's happening here? Well, inflation numbers came out. And as I predicted, the numbers were actually lower uh, than last month's in a year-over-year -year measure. But even the major media could not escape that this is bad news because of the, uh, of the uh, increase from last month. Uh, the gold dips, the dollar gains. Sharp rate hike bets are definitely now in the cards for a three-quarter percentage point rate hike, if not more, um, um, next week. And the markets are nervous because of it. On the verge of a panic, gold prices fell more than 1% as a dollar jumped after an unexpected rise in August consumer prices cemented the bets for an aggressive rate hikes from the U.S. Federal Reserve. And so that is what is driving it. Gold has gapped lower on higher than expected CPI with 75 basis points now definitely confirmed. The U.S. dollar is surging and may continue to pressure gold, according to Tai Wong, a senior trader at Horaeus Precious Metals in New York. As reported by CNBC, gold is likely to hold at this range between 1619, 1690 and 1700 range in the short term with the U.S. dollar unlikely to make new highs unless there's a very hawkish Fed result next week. In other words, if they go a full point. Um, and uh, it is likely that they will wait and see as a meeting after that is in November. That's when the next meeting is. And that's when a lot of people think uh, that the crap is going to hit the fan prover proverbially because we don't know uh, what could happen with this panic that we're seeing now in the markets. If they continue this bullish uh, effect it's like a teeter totter, and um, it, it could cause a lot of issues, and that's what some people are fearing. And today's market reaction is definitely going to be sobering as the Fed uh, begins to make their move here. Uh, monthly U.S. consumer prices unexpectedly rose in August as declining gasoline prices were offset by gains in the cost of rent and food. The dollar index rose one percent making gold more expensive for overseas buyers. And by the way, the only reason why gas prices are really down is because uh, the Biden administration is unleashing the reserves and they're doing it ahead of the election. It's a power play. It's a political play. Um, 
but that is why gas prices are down. And, and that's not why those reserves are there, by the way. They're not there to be tapped into for political reasons. They're there to be tapped into in case of a real emergency. Um, Donald Trump actually uh, stockpiled them even more, especially when we saw barrels of oil going for negative $37 a barrel. That was quite an interesting time. So all in all, this basically points to continued work from the FOMC to bring inflation under control, said Ole Hansen, head of commodity strategy at Saxo Bank. Markets now see an 81% chance of a 75 basis point rate hike by the Fed at its September 20th and 21st meeting. Although the last number I heard was like 86%, so this is kind of strange that it is actually going in, the, in a downward direction. Uh, Although gold is considered a hedge against inflation, rising U.S. rates increase the opportunity cost of holding bullion. And it is an opportunity to buy when the prices are low, for sure. And these are times that uh, are somewhat predictable, as when the Fed raises rates, typically, uh, in the short term at least, it knocks the price of gold and silver down. But look at where gold is now, $1,700 and change, um, compared to where it was was. Um, you know, before the pandemic. Uh, and where was the dollar index then? There are times when the gold can rise along with uh, the dollar as well, too. And the dollar index, that is. Spot silver fell over 2%, uh, having recorded its biggest one-day percentage gain since February 2021 yesterday. Following a ferocious short squeeze in silver with 54% of silver's demand tied to fabrication, silver also remains highly sensitive to our deteriorating ga gauge of commodity demand. And so with that being said, uh, when you look at this in, in totality, uh, silver's rise and fall today were really both due to um, it as a precious metal, which should be encouraging again to silver stackers out there um, because copper actually went up today. So silver went down and copper went up which means that it was now starting to see this decoupling of sorts, at least in the last two days. So today's news should be encouraging to silver stackers, indeed. And by the way, somebody had commented and said, hey, why all of a sudden you're so bullish on silver? You've been kind of negative on silver for a while. But in reality, I've been consistent uh, because I've predicted, and I'm going to stay true to my prediction, uh, of silver getting to $29 an ounce by the end of this year. Is that a stubborn prediction? Perhaps so. I was wrong last year, but I am overall bullish in the medium term for silver. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen in October, November, but some people are predicting that that's when we're going to see uh, the the scales tip. Uh, and we might see that no matter what, that all this activity that the Fed is doing is not going to work. And we may see that, uh, that there's not going to be much faith in the Fed. And when the faith runs out of the Fed, and then there goes the dollar, there goes the economy, there goes the stock market, and already the stock market suffering with, again, that massive drop. And uh, the August Consumer Price Index was reported up 8.3% year-on-year compared to forecast for up 8%. On the monthly basis, the August CPI rose 0.1% from July. That's the inescapable news. Inflation is still rising. And the, Ju the July CPI report showed an 8.5% rise annually. So the media could no longer spin it as being lower inflation, peak inflation, whatever, because especially when you look at uh, where it was in August of last year, it was starting to climb up dramatically. So from July to August, in spite of lower gas prices, there you go. The food and energy component of the CPI report was up 0.6% in August, which is double the expectations for a rise of 0.3%. Well, why is that? Well, largely because of the easy monetary policies by the Fed and also other banks around the world, central banks around the world, modern monetary theory. Bad news, folks. Uh, quantitative easing, bad news. It's going to come back to bite us. It's starting to nibble. This is just a nibble on what it could be if we're not careful, that's for sure. And silver is still above $19 an ounce. Uh, now it can be hit again, and we'll see what the what actually happens at that meeting and what the uh, Fed chair says about it. We can see the prices get hammered again. Uh, we'll find out. But nonetheless, 
global stock markets, you know, are, are suffering. They were mixed firmly overnight, but now we're down sharply today. Uh, we'll see here. And by the way, understanding where things were are measured nowadays compared to where they were during the Carter-Reagan years when inflation was high. Uh, if you lose those metrics, and I think those metrics are are you know calculated over shadow stats, uh, we should be at about 16% inflation now. So it's really worse than what they're telling us uh, when it's all said and done. What does that mean for you? That means it's not a bad idea to accumulate some gold and silver. But have a little bit of this stuff in your portfolio. They are on sale right now. And I know that's a very cliche in this market, uh, in this community to say, well, gold and silver are on sale. Yeah, well, they're always on sale, it seems like, because the price just keeps going down and down and down. People are very frustrated. But it's a long-term proposition. How you buy it, especially with silver, sub $20 an ounce. Now, if you can find silver for um, um, under $22 an ounce, you're probably doing pretty good these days. Uh, but uh, that is a bargain in my view. Um, and that's why I've stacked more silver this year than I have any other year in my entire life. And uh, But I'm still accumulating gold as well. Gold is the ultimate store of value. It, it, it tends to be much more stable in terms of its um, price compared to its value. Um, whereas silver, many people see as being undervalued in the bargain of the decade or year. Uh, regardless of what you think, if you have silver, hold on to it. If you're in the mood to buy it or and have the um, capability to and it's within your budget, it may not be a bad idea to do that as well. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I panic today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. As is always the case, things can turn around. We never know uh, with the stock market. But uh, one thing is for sure, over the long course of time, gold and silver have proven themselves as stores of value, as wealth preservation devices. But a lot of that depends on how you buy and how you accumulate and how long you hold it for. So there you go. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>